Hello, and welcome to Silicon Valley Girls Chat Over Tea, phase two. Yes, we're wearing the same clothes. <laughs> However, we have a new subject, and we are going to talk about January 2020. 2020, and don't yes. forget, before we start, please subscribe below, hit the thumbs up to like our videos so we know you like them, and hit the notification bell button. Yes. We really appreciate that. And in case this is the first time you are seeing one of our videos, I'm Gloria. And I'm Rosetta. Yes. Yes. And today we're drinking this wonderful ginger turmeric tea. It smells amazing. With all of the people around, I don't know about where you live, where I live. Oh my God, everybody's got a cold or the flu. Everybody's got the and flu. And ginger is really really good and what I do when I have a tea like this is I squeeze in fresh lemon and I add just a little bit of natural raw organic honey because that will coat the throat so if you have a cough or a sore throat it. it will soothe it the ingredients of our tea is organic ginger organic turmeric organic licorice that's why it smells so good organic orange peel, organic orange oil, and organic black pepper. And Rosetta taught me a very important lesson. And that is when you have turmeric, in order for it to engage at the highest level, you need black pepper. So that's why there's black pepper. This is actually by Whole Foods Market. So it's something that hopefully there's a Whole Foods near you. Yep, and turmeric is, um very great because it's great for being anti-inflammatory. Yes, and that's really important. So, so we've had it seeping here. Yes. I'm gonna drink it, can't wait. Cheers. Cheers. Mm, mm. I love it. So, let's kick it off. We have a crisis in America. We have several crises in America. However, the first one we wanna talk to you about is our farmers. You know, one of the things that's really sad is we don't really grow or raise anything here. Most of our food comes from other countries. So there is a, a CEO of Lando Lake and she was doing an interview and we'll put the link for you down below. During this interview, she said that America is in crisis because the volume of production from American farmers has gone from, let's say, a, a price that the farmers would make of $43,000 a year to a negative $1,500 a year. Wow. That is staggering. How can our farmers be expected to stay in business? I don't know about you, whenever I'm in an airplane, I always look at the land below. I'm the person that wants the window seat so I can look out and see the ground. And we have all this land, and I understand how you don't wanna overpopulate. However, I think we have to figure out how more communities can grow their own foods. Because I guarantee you, if we grew our foods, a lot of the illness that we are all yeah, experiencing really would go away because it would be natural, it would be organic. The thing that gets us in trouble, millennials, I'm talking to you, is we like fast. So we like processed foods. Your body was not made to digest processed food. Processed foods. fast food. Yes. And while it's like a, a, a friend of mine told me, he said, if we were to shut down, I think it's called Grubhub, Shows you I, I cook my own food. Grubhub. I yeah. Grub, I've heard of Grubhub. He said if we were to shut that down, millennials would start to die because they don't know how to cook and they don't, uh, all they know is to pick up their phone and have something delivered. Because we've made it that way. The manufacturers yes. have made it so easy to be able to just get something conveniently from a package, fast food, processed foods that we have lost that touch with going into the kitchen yes. and cooking. We're yes. not, our bodies are not made to eat all this junk and all yes. these harmful ingredients. Yes. We have been living on nutrients from Mother Earth, yes. whole food nutrients for the longest time, way back when. Right. 
So the next time you're like, oh, I'll just go around the corner to McDonald's, maybe you just go to a good organic grocery store and buy some food. And let me tell you something, children love to cook. When I was a little kid, I could barely reach the top of the stove and I was begging to be allowed to cook. It's a great time, it's a great space of community. So put down your phone, go in the kitchen and cook something good. And involve your kids, because yes. when you involve your kids, they know what's going in the food and they're more apt to eat what you cook. That's right. And it's healthier for you all Absolutely. around, less toxins and chemicals. Absolutely. Unfortunately, the fires are still raging in the Australian bush. It has hit over 12 million acres. I mean, just just think million. about that. I can't 12. even comprehend that, 12 million. I mean, that's way more than what we have in California, the yes. fires we had. And I thought that was a lot in Sonoma yes. and uh, the you know, other like places, Paradise. Paradise. And, yes. yes. I mean, and we, we were looking at 6,000 acres, you know, maybe 20, maybe 30,000, 12 million acres. And the indigenous animals are being wiped out by this fire. And the part that really hurts my heart, they think that it was arson. They think that someone set the fire on intention. And as you were saying in our last episode, the first part we had, most of these wildfires are started from arson. Yeah. And to think that, you know, all this yeah. in Australia, I mean, I just, yeah, it yeah. just is mind blowing. I can't even, you know, comprehend, you know, what they were thinking and look at the damage. Yes. I, well, you know, just, I always think some people think that the Chinese government is overpowering and overwhelming. And um, I was in Singapore just as it was transitioning from British control to back to Chinese or China control. The one thing that I will tell you is they did not play with people throwing trash. So a thousand dollar fine for chewing gum in public. They don't even sell gum in any of the stores. No, a thousand dollar fine for a cigarette on the street. As women, we could get on the subway and go anywhere we wanted to go, any time of the night. And we did not have to worry about anybody harming us. Because if you harm a woman, you're going to jail. And after that, you would probably be put to death. So I think sometimes in our attempt to be fair, people perceive that we're weak. And I just think we have got to figure out how to better support our communities. And if someone throws a cigarette out and burns 12 million acres, they should be responsible for that. Sometimes it's hard because it's like in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Who's gonna see that? If you're the lone person or you have an accomplice with you and they and you both decide to do it, who's gonna know? Well, you know, sometimes people, you know, I'm not gonna tell if you don't tell, but then something comes up and somebody tells. Yeah. So if someone knows something, our wish is that they will share that information so that the authorities can do something. I don't know, it's sad because I think it, because it has gotten so big and so out of hand, right. they've got themselves in so deep, whoever started these wildfires, it's just, they feel just, they can't say anything right. now because it's just snowboard out of control. Yeah, I mean, it was like, oh my God, all I was doing was making a little fire because my family was cold. You know, we've had fires in Yosemite National Park and that's what happened is I was just making a little fire. So try and be careful, see if there are alternative ways instead of fires. Right, right. Yes. So I had uh, commented to Rosetta, the Golden uh, Globe Awards were uh, last week. Did you all watch it? Yes, what did you think? <laughs> I told her, I said, um, women's chest areas were on full display. And one of the things that was very interesting is there were nominees that people were like, who is that? <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, like there is a film called 1917 and it's a war uh, based film. Uh, apparently some young men are somewhere and they dispatch 
other soldiers to inform them like they're walking into uh, an ambush or something like that. Come to find out a lot of it is green screen. Really? And, really. I mean, and so people are just amazed because of the depth of the technology. Right, right. And I'm, but it's a war film, so you know it's going to be very graphic. Right. And I'm like, okay, so you're, you're going to show the bullet hitting the person and then exploding? Eh, no. I don't think that that is what makes a great movie. Um, I was sharing with Rosetta, and this film is not up for an award. There's a new movie with um, Michael B. Jordan and Jamie Foxx called Just Mercy. And this movie is... Um, it's based on a lawyer, a young man that was, like say he lived in New York or New Jersey, you know, very affluent area where people are, you know, you see all different walks of life. And he decides after he graduates from Yale that he is going to go back to Alabama to look at the cases of people on death row and that didn't do the crime to see what he can do to help. And he goes back to try and help people and the things that they do to him, because you know, it's like, you think that you know, you're know you some high fluting lawyer. Well, that doesn't matter here. You're still a black man and you're gonna be treated accordingly. My husband took me to see it and I cried through most of the movie and he's like, this is not a, a movie date. And I told him, yes, it is, because the sad thing for me is, because this is a true story, um, Michael B. Jordan and Jamie Foxx are going to different shows, and they were on Ellen's show one day, and one, I think the lawyer shared that the sheriff that was in office at the time that this horrible, horrible injustice was done just retired in 2019. Wow. So you don't, you know, when you go see these movies, don't think, oh, that was back in the day. No, that's right now. So what's the name of this film? Just Mercy. Just Mercy, because I'd like to see that. Yes. yes. And then once she sees it, then I can, we can really talk about it. Yeah, because, I'd like to see that. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. So there were lots of Golden Globe uh, awards. Uh, uh, lots of uh, people were like, hmm. So now it's going to lead into the Oscars to see who's gonna get the nominations, where are the possible links. And one of the things, once again, female directors were left out. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know what it's gonna take. Does it take females like us not going to see movies unless there is a female director? You know, how do we help the women get from under the foot of Hollywood? Because, one of the films, uh, Little Women, yes, uh, was nominated for Best Screenplay, Best Actress, Best Supporting Actress, and um, uh, one other thing, but not the director. And and the, the director, she's just like, I'm just excited that my film is going to be seen by so many people and people are excited about it. However, you cannot do all of that without a great director. Without a director. The director is the main role. Yes. They are the ones that propel the movie to where it is now. If it wasn't yes. for them, there would be no movie. Yes. And at the Golden Globe, um, Jennifer Lopez was nominated for her role uh, in Hustle. Hustle. And um, she was snobbed for the Oscars. Um, Beyonce was possibly up for uh, Song of the Year from The Lion King, nothing. Um, the Golden Globes, one thing that I really love, there's a young lady, her name is Aquafina. I love her. And she, we were introduced to her on a large scale from the movie Crazy Rich Asians. I loved her in that. And the new movie that she's in, it's about her grandmother who's terminally ill and how the family doesn't want the grandmother to know. And so they pretend uh, that there's an event coming up so that they can have people around her right. without her knowing you're sick. What they're there for. Yeah. Right. So she did a beautiful job. She was very well dressed. 
she did not get an Oscar nomination. I'm surprised because so, usually when you get a Golden Globe, you yes, usually nominate one of the people and, that nominated. And, and a lot of them, they got Golden Globe nominations and SAG awards. Right. And nothing for the Oscars. And the Oscars are going to go uh, hostless. So they're going to just kind of throw it out there. And well, they're see, not having a host. They're not having a host I again. did not hear about that. Yep. They're going to go no host. They're just going to throw it out there and see what happens. That's odd. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. We'll keep an eye we'll out, see. and if we hear more things, um, you know, I love me some Billy Porter. He wore this beautiful white, sort of like a white tux with a cape. Yep, that flowing at the back. Oh, my God, he looked so good. He looked so good. It was, it, it made a statement, yes. and he looked amazing in it, and yes. he did his thing. Yes, he did, and that's what I love, because... What he says he does is he meets with people and they they don't look for clothes off the rack. They actually look for, how do you say, something that's really stunning and then they Billy Porter it. And I love that. <laughs> they, I love that. They Billy Porter they it. They Billy Porter okay, it. Okay, anyone, you want to do Billy Porter your outfit? That's right. I'm going to use that. Oh, yes. And also, if you do Billy Porter your outfit, Put a little picture down below so we We'd can check it out. We'd love to see it. Billy yes. Porter. So that's going to be my new phase, my yes. new phrase, I mean. That's Billy right. Porter, your outfit. That's right, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure a lot of you have heard that Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan have decided to step back from their royal duties. Um, they actually did an announcement without the blessing of the Queen. And I think the reason they did that is they, they've been talking to the queen on the backside, trying to get her to understand that Duchess Meghan is being harassed at the same level that he watched his mom. And he has no intention of his wife and his son being at harm's way. And going down the same path that his mother went down. Yes. So what do you think about that? Well, I have a lot of things I'd like to say about this. And I'm going to keep it short because it can go on forever. Me, being from England, I do have a lot of things to say. Um, I understand where Prince Harry is coming from. And I love the fact that he's standing up for his wife and his son. And he's taking care of them, making sure that things don't go down that path. Because when Lady Di was around before she got killed, nobody said anything. Right. It was just something like the norm. Nobody yeah. in England really... It was almost much. like she needed to get over herself. It's right, like, what's right. her problem? Like the paparazzi was just the norm by default. I yeah. mean, it was bad that they were hounding her. But I love that Prince Harry is sticking up for his wife and his son. You know, being from um, England, it is sad that they're moving. Yeah. And even though they say it's interim, I have a feeling that it may be longer than just what they interim. say. Yeah. And, you know, I I believe that they have to do what they have to do. But being from the royal family, it's just hard not to see them in England. I know. It's it's really, really hard. However, the one thing that I love um, after all this happening is the Queen is actually okay with it. Yeah. She actually made a statement. She said she's okay. And I think because she understands yeah. where they're coming from. She saw what happened to Lady Diana. Yes. And she doesn't want another reoccurrence. So... I support Prince, you know, Prince Harry and Meghan and the family, yeah. but it's just sad. It yeah. really is I sad. wish the Queen would have been in a position that she could say, paparazzi, I declare you will no longer harass the royal family. And if someone is found harassing the royal family, you will stand before me and atone for your action. I think that that would have allowed them to stay because I know if I had little Archie in my arms, there would, no, I'm not going to stay somewhere where I feel that my child could be harmed or killed. Right. And you're right because the queen could have come out publicly and made an announcement yeah. on TV and she should have done that, but yeah. um, I don't know what she was. I'm sure she, she she's probably it. trying to not make it royal family specific the laws and the guidelines she wants to walk that fine line sure. however you watched our beautiful princess diana 
get murdered. And it was all because they, they wanted a picture? Yeah, they wanted a picture of her and Dodie Fayette yeah. in their Mercedes. That's it. And all they were trying to do is get from A to B. Yep, and to get away from them. Yes. So so we'll see what happens, yes. but we'll be very sad. But I'm sure, even though they're not living in the UK, I'm sure we'll hear a lot more about them. Absolutely. They'll have all the press around. And all and the we'll, charity yes. work that they're going to be doing yes. with their nonprofit. Their, you know, but I think the only thing they really have to work out is the security because the money that they receive from the royal family, they're like, we we don't need it. We'll make our own money. So, and that doesn't now that that's happening, that doesn't cover their security. So they right, have to so, decide how they're going to do that because that comes out of their yeah. own pocket. And I think wherever they land, it's going to be a place where the paparazzi will not be allowed to hound them at the level that they're currently. Well, it's going to be hard because they are going to divide their time between yeah. UK, US, and Canada. Canada. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll keep you informed as always. Absolutely. And our thoughts and what we think about what's happening with them. Yes. So um, a little tidbit we wanted to share with you. As you transition from 2019, you know, because normally you just put like 1119. When you write 2020, you need to write 112020. Because you can put a 20 on it and someone could change and just add a 19. To or it. a 2-1 or 2-3, yes. so it'll be 2021. Yes. So that if someone so that if you give someone a check, they can redeposit that same check again. Right. Because nowadays you have that easy access of scanning it, scanning the check yep. on your phone. Yep. You don't have to go into the bank. Yep. So so just be aware. So we just wanted to because I was I was telling her, you know, my hardest thing going from the previous year to the new year is It'll be, you know, when I wrote my first check, I wrote January 4th, you know, 2019. And I was like, ah, oh. so I just, you know, put a little, uh, where the nine was, put it, made it like a little slash. So just be aware, cause you know, there are people out there. Yep. So this weekend on Sunday, our local football team, the San Francisco 49ers will be hosting the Green Bay Packers and the winner of that game will be headed to the Super Bowl. Yay, I can't wait. My husband is over the moon. He is a diehard 49er fan. When they were at the bottom of the pile, he wore proudly wore his 49er gear. So Yeah, my husband is, is a pretty big fan because he wears his gear whenever. Yes. It does they don't have to be winning no. for them for him to wear it. He'll just bring it out and wear it. There you go. So <laughs> Good luck, 49ers, and we're going to see how that's going to work out. So when you go into the new year, do you do resolutions? Um, I actually haven't done any resolutions. I don't do resolutions. I do goals and visions Perfect. for the year or going moving forward. Like, do you do a vision board? I do. A vi I've done vision boards, and this nice. year I did a vision book. Nice. Yes. So the difference between a vision board and a vision book is that when you're doing the vision book, because it has so many pages, obviously you're not going to do a massive vision book, right? Right. You do your visions and the pages, and then the blank pages, you can write in that. You can journal. Right. You can write affirmations. You right. can write whatever you want in that. So you nice. can keep it going, or you can leave space, like pages and pages, so that you can still keep adding to that vision book. I like that. So that's what I did. Yes. So do you do any resolutions? No, because normally mid-month, like now, today's the 16th, I'm usually over whatever I said. So for this year, I decided because, you know, as many of you know, I fell on uh, November 21st. So I have this beautiful boot that I'm still rocking. And um, my direction for 2020 is health. Good. I was um, with a lady, and one of the things she shared is if you have your health, you can have anything. Yep. And if you don't have your health, then you're not going to have a healthy business because just as you're at the pinnacle of height of success, she says you're going to fall off the cliff. Yeah. Wealth means nothing when right. you don't have your health. Yes. And I tell people all the time, health is wealth. Yes, absolutely. So my focus is health, and that way it's not like a resolution because it's something continuous going yes. forward. Yeah. So I'm all about health, and you know, 
helping to lift my business into 2020 with great success. Good. Yeah. Great. Yay. So um, since we're talking about New Year, this is like a little wheel. Uh, this is the year of the rat. Happy Chinese New Year will be occurring next weekend. Next weekend, the Lunar New Year, January the 25th. Yes. And that goes on for 10 days. Yes. Have you ever participated in the celebration of the, you know, like went to San Francisco to see the dragon? And so I went years ago when I was a teenager and I didn't really like it. Right. I went to the San Francisco parade. It's too crowded yeah. and you really don't get to see anything and it's cold yeah. and it's at nighttime. But um, when I was growing up, I remember that uh, we have traditions that we do. Right. I would have to, I'd go to bed early and then I'd have to wake up at midnight and I would get up and pray to my ancestors oh, nice. and uh, do all that and burn the money to right. the ancestors and all. And my mom would cook because when it's Chinese, you, you really have to eat vegetarian. Like there's right. one dish you make that's vegetarian. And then she would cook a lot of different dishes. Right. But we would have to, if we had like a, um, like a altar or something that we um, pray to or right. whatever religion we are, right? Right. We would serve that to our ancestors. So wow. she would make the food and we would put it on the table and we would serve the ancestors. That's beautiful. Burn the incense, burn the burn the money. It's right. not real money. It's right. fake money. Yeah. So that's what we would do. But that's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. I love it. I love it. Also, Monday is Dr. Martin Luther King Day. And um, surprisingly, there are still states that do not celebrate the holiday, even though it is a national holiday. So um, for me, I'm looking forward to the opportunity because um, this organization that I'm in, we are gearing up for February, which is National Black History Month. and being a woman, I know great men like Dr. King and Malcolm X and, you know, we decided to try and find, because this is a lunar year, 29 days, yeah. not 28, women, uh, black women who created success. So as we continue to go forward, as we celebrate these holidays, we will be sharing information that I find because I was really shocked because I was like, oh my God, it's going to be hard to find 29. Now I'm at 36 and I could keep going. Right. So women, you know, we are some powerful, powerful creatures. We just have to know and believe that we're powerful. We do not need a man to tell us what to do or how to do something. We have got to figure out how to shift the level of power because our children need us. As we prepare today, they're getting ready to do the impeachment of the president in the Senate. And there are people who are standing on the floor, raising their hand, swearing to uphold the Constitution of the United States. And they put their hand down and they say, well, eh, he didn't do anything wrong. That is not right. We have got to figure out as moms and daughters, how to empower the next generation to know that they are equal and that they do not have to obey a man, that they can stand on their own accord. Because, you know, Rosetta's son is young. If we as women can't figure out how to stop what's going on in the world, her son is not gonna be able to go outside if he wants to. The, you know, I, uh, my husband was watching um, one of those Arnold movies, Terminator okay. 2 or 3 something, mm -hmm. and I, I don't know, whatever. And so I'm looking at it and all of a sudden I had an aha moment because the robotics that a lot of things are happening today, they are putting people out of work because they're using robotics and technology. And it's like, how can you give these robotics all this power and have no way of securing it? There's this vision that if you want a, a, a coder 
that the coder can't be an American child. It has to be someone from a foreign country. And if you're not an American child, your loyalty is not as high as an American child would be. And I think as moms, we have got to let our children know, nobody can do it better than you can, baby. You're the best. And I am here to support you as you grow and go forward. Yes, we don't give our children enough encouragement that they need, that, yeah. we, that they really need to move forward. I mean, it's amazing what parents are teaching their kids. It all stems from top down anywhere, in, yeah. including companies, it stems from top down, management down, yes. same as a family, yes. parents down, whatever you teach them. And this goes back to something that I had a recent conversation with. We need to start teaching kids about business and yes. money and yes. finances at a young age. Yes. Schools need to start teaching that. Yes. We, used to ha we, we need to have subjects on yes. finance, yes. how to manage money, yes. business, how, to, how a business operates. And it yes. shouldn't be just in college. It should start from way, yes. way when you're young because yes. kids are much smarter than you, way smarter. than you believe them to be. Way smarter. Yes. I mean, if you think your child is like, oh, it's, it's so cute, hand them a, a, a phone and let them blow your mind. They can swipe and scan. They, they can do open way more apps. than I could. My son, yeah. I was like, here, can you help me do this? Yes. He knows a lot of stuff more than I do. So, yes. so we need to change our whole education cycle and start moving with the way of the future. Yes. Teach them about money, about business, and global warming. Absolutely, because we've got to fix that. We cannot keep doing all the things that we're doing and expect a different result. I think that's called insanity. Yeah, it really So, is. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you all very, very much for tuning in to our part two. Yes, and I'm really enjoying my tea here, oh, this ginger excellent. turmeric. It's, it's really great, I'm enjoying it a lot. But again, yes, thank you for tuning in to part two of our chats yes. over tea yes and we just love talking about all the things that are taking place out yes. there in the world today and please hit the like button the thumbs up subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you can be informed whenever we have our chats yes so thanks again and take care and remember to always, always keep, keep smiling, smiling. Bye-bye now. Bye. Toodles.